Shalom Aleikum, this is Ben Yaman, and today we're going to talk about some visions. Now, the vision, the, per, the person who has had these visions is myself, so these are my visions, and I know I am not alone in this. And I've also talked about this in the past, but I've quickly covered it up because people had made fun of me a lot. But I feel that it is so important to talk about this right now that I am just going to put it up, especially because I have well, lots of subscribers now. And where in the past I have not. And so I want to give all my new people this information too, uh, besides the people who have been with me for a long time. And. As I said before, I know I'm not alone in having these visions. And of course, you don't have to, to believe me. And you, or you can say that I'm just copying these people, and that's fine too. But I tell you that I have seen these things in vision, and I know that they will come true. And I know that they're not just me thinking these things because God is inspiring many, many people to have these same visions. And so, with that we'll get started. There, there are several visions that I've had, and I'll go in the order that I received it. The first vision I had when I was 12, and I am 31 years old right now. So, I wonder how many years that is, at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, that's 19 years ago, I received this, this vision, and I did not, I, I did not understand it at the time. And, but it, the images of it were burned into to my memory. And, to be honest, it was a little comical. It looked like a cartoonish, like, possibly because I was 12 and that's how I understood things at the time. But I got this, I got this board here. And I'm, I'm going to use it to, to ex ex explain some things in the because I I'm I, I'm a visual person I like to see stuff. Now I'm not gonna tell the first part of the vision because it's not important. It was that was just a, a, a way to, to let me know when these things would begin to happen. And well let me just say it, it, in the vision I saw three sisters and the middle one was pregnant which well, when the first part of my vision was fulfilled, I knew three sisters, and the middle one was pregnant. And as soon as this event happened, this, the the Holy Ghost connected these things together, and I, that's when I started to understand the the vision. <coughs> now, I saw a a giant field, and it was divided in the middle by a large river of water just like that now I saw on two sides there, on the, the left side there were three towers On hills, so like that. And these three towers would be the is the beginning of this vision. 
and of course um, these three towers represent the the three towers uh, in 9-11 1, 2, and 7 buildings 1, 2, and 7 and the reason why they were set on hills is because these towers would be used for the whole world, for the, the whole country to look at. So the left side of the country represents of, of the field represents America. Now in this field, there were lots and lots of sheep. And they were white. So here's my image of lots of sheep. And then on the right side of the field, I saw another flock of sheep, and they were red. So, we have these, we know this, uh, I, I, I know this is America, and then this represents the nations of the old world. Now, as soon as 9-11 happened, that's when I realized that, the, that these three towers represented 9-11. And, and when I understood that, I was able to understand the rest of the vision. Now, among the, sh the, sh the, the white sheep, I saw a wolf in sheep's clothing. And the wolf went around whispering to all the sheep saying that they had to go over to kill the sheep on this side of the field because of the three towers. Now, the sheep on the, the, the right side of the field had a, a a leader over them. It was a sheep that stood on its hind legs and it held a whip in his hand and he had on his head a crown, a three prong crown and in the middle crown was a star, a red star. Now, later on, I came to understand that the wolf in sheep's clothing represents a secret combination that is in the United States, and that they were the ones who caused the three towers to be destroyed, and they're the ones who, through propaganda, uh, got the... Th the Americans or the flock of sheep, white sheep, to come over into the old world to kill the 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 red sheep in this field. Now the sheep that stood on his hind legs holding a whip with the crown of three prongs represents three tyrants of three nations that rule over these sheep, the red sheep.
and that it also represents that the United States would come over and and uh, destroy three tyrants. Now, um, I believe this has been fulfilled because we have deposed the tyranny in Afghanistan, the tyranny in Iraq, and the ty tyranny in Libya. Now, after those three tyrants were torn down. There was a great slaughter in the old world somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, I believe it's the Middle East now, but I was never told where. And then I saw the the red sheep were stopped being killed on this on on their own land. And the red sheep went over to uh, the flock of white sheep and started, and there and and there was an even greater slaughter uh, among the white sheep over here. And I came to to know that this represents, and this includes the the sheep that stands on its hind legs with a whip and a crown of three prongs with a star in the middle represents that an alliance of nations of the old world would come over to America and start and kill the people here in a war and of course the the red star symbolizes the the uh, Russian and Chinese alliance And so I saw in the this, in this vision that this alliance of nations would attack the United States, which has yet to be fulfilled, and that this attack would take place after America has deposed three tyrants, which I believe have already taken place uh, since uh, we have. The, the Taliban in Afghanistan, the Saddam Hussein regime, and the Gaddafi regime, all destroyed by the United States. Now, after the, the then after the sheep uh, stopped killing each other on American soil, the the wolf in sheep's clothing laughed and licked up the blood that was on the ground, and the, the whole field was covered with blood. And this symbolizes that the slaughter in, that would take place in the United States would be so great that it would be like there was bloodshed, blood all over the ground. And the, the wolf in sheep's clothing, which represents the secret combination, would rejoice because of this and laugh. and lick up the blood, meaning that they would use this as uh, to fulfill their, their their future plans. And that's the next part, is that inside this river of water my, was a, a, a desert island in the middle. And I saw a shark would get beached up, swam up to the the, the the surface of the of the beach and it vomited a seed onto the beach and the the seed grew into a mushroom fire which consumed both fields. And that was the end of the, the vision that I had, this first vision. Now I'm not entirely, I'm not yet entirely sure what the, the shark vomiting, the seed means. I, I believe 
in, in two things about that. One, it represents the 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 abomination and desolation that will overtake the entire world. Or it represents the nuclear f nuclear fire that will be brought on the United States, in which we will no no doubt launch upon the 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 world. Uh, to be honest, I believe the first one that I have told you more strongly that it represents the famine and the plague that will take place after this war. And so, this this vision represents World War Three and how the United States will be attacked and lots and lots of people will die. Now, I didn't have any visions about anything like that for years. And then, when I was living in Utah, I started having visions again. And that was about four or five years ago, four or five years, three years ago, I believe, it's been a while, but I had this other vision, and I had one on one day, one, uh, one day, and the other one on the next day, and the first vision was about me and my brother. We were we were going into San Francisco because my mom wanted us to get this jar of of that had life in it, and my my brother and I we went to San Francisco to get it. We got the jar, and we were running. And there were lots of people who were trying to, to stop us from bringing this jar back that was filled with life. Life water, or living water, basically. And as, a, as, I, as I, I was holding the jar in my hand, it started to crack. And slowly fall apart in my hand. Then it all fell apart, and the, the living water spilled out everywhere. And then I, I didn't understand it at the time. Then, then the next day, I had another vision, which was very, very uh, literal and requires no interpretation. In the in the vision I was running through a forest. It was the night time. It was dark. I couldn't see. I could hardly see. I, I felt like I was running through the forest for hours. Which I I have uh, come to, to realize uh, searching for some represents something searching, I believe. That's not that's not the important part. And then eventually, I saw a light in the distance, and so I started running towards the light. And the light that I saw was actually an angel of the of the Lord. And I I, I came to the the angel, and he was hovering above the ground. His uh, clothes were white and glowing, and he was glowing. And he looked at me, and he didn't, he didn't say anything, but I heard his voice inside me myself. And he pointed to a spot on the ground, and he said, dig, in my mind. And so I got on my hands and my knees, and I started to dig with my hands. And I uncovered a book. And... Uh, the the angel told me in my head to read it, and so I picked it up in my head and brushed the dust off, and I read the title, and it said "Sins of America" by 
uh, David S. S. Welchman, which is my great or great great grand grandfather, and um, later on I was told that the reason why that it was attributed to my great grandfather David S. Welchman was because my grand that uh, he was the fourth generation from me and that uh, the and that the, the Lord had been numbering our sins since that time and so it was me then my father then my father's father then my great grandfather David S. Lipschman so yeah it was my my great grandfather and I, I, I don't remember too much about the, the exact contents of what I read, but here's the, the gist of it. And there are, there are three things that the Lord is primarily concerned about in the United States. And I, I know there's, there's more. The first thing is pride, which uh, anybody can tell you. We have become a prideful nation because of our technology, our wealth, and we're overreaching ourselves and, and we don't think we need God anymore. Um, we're too smart for our own good. And then the next thing the Lord was concerned about was sexual immorality. and. Uh, oh, he, he kind of got lumped into this this group: uh, sexual immorality, abortion, and the destruction of the family. And then the third thing that I saw was the was murder and the the mass slaughter of animals, and that this thing offended the Lord. And the, and, and it, it, it was kind of poetical, but I, with each thing, I, 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 I had the, what offended the Lord, a promise that if we repent, the Lord would forgive us, and that what the Lord would do because of each of these things. And, and it, it was basically added on for the first part had one thing and the second part had the first thing and then more added on to it the third thing had the two others and then the third one added on to it. And this is the, the gist of, of what I, I was told would happen. Our technology will not save us in the war. The Lord would send war upon this nation. The, the Lord would then send famine upon the nation. And this is what I, it was written specifically, it says, that the famine would be so great that people would kill each other and eat each other and that mothers would slit the necks of their children to drink their blood for want of drink and to eat their flesh for want of food and that many people would perish in the famine and then the third judgment is that the Lord would send plagues throughout the, the land to, to, to do a great work of desolation in the United States. And so the, the Lord says we will have a war, our technology won't save us in any of these events. Uh, we will have famine so great that we will have a, a horrible plague or plagues uh, run rampant throughout the land. And that the Lord said that each one of these things would not have to happen if we would repent. But that with each progressive one, 
is uh, the Lord would uh, would it would get worse and worse in the amount of death. So the wars would create a lot of death, and the famines would create even more death, and then the plagues will create even more death. And all because of the three things, because we are prideful, we are sexually immoral, and we have destroyed the family, and that we are murderers, and that both killing men, people, and animals, and that though this, this highly offended the Lord. And then the then I was told some specific things. I was told, it says, uh, Woe unto New York City, you will burn with fire. Uh, woe unto San Francisco, for you shall be destroyed. Uh, woe unto Los Angeles and San Diego, for you will be destroyed by, by fire. And I, I saw... And I said, uh, Woe unto you, Washington, D.C., for your judgment seats will become empty. Um, they said, uh, Woe unto you, Omaha and Council Bluffs, for you shall fight and slaughter one another. Um, all these cities that I've mentioned were actually places that I have been. I think that's why I was told specifically about those cities. And uh, and then the final city was lost was a uh, Salt Lake City it says, Woe unto you, Salt Lake City, for you have had the most truth and you have become the most wicked city on the face of the earth. And that the the Lord would basically deal with Salt Lake City as with Jerusalem and with Sodom and Gomorrah, and the the reason for the greatness of the wickedness in Salt Lake City. I've been there. I can speak from my own example. Is that is that those people should have had should have been following the truth because they had greater examples. They, they, they violate tons of the, of the Lord's uh, way. Uh, they are their Sabbath breakers. They are... It's, it's the seed of secret combination in in, a, in a Utah. And the government there. That's the head of government, which is very corrupt. Um, it is... It is it is, uh, I just can't fully describe the feeling that I had there is that the people are slothful in hearing the Lord's voice. They are prideful. They are, they think they're better because that's the, the capital of the church. But uh, no, it's, it's not. They're, they're, they have become the most wicked city on the, the planet. And that's saying a lot when there's other cities that are, that are involved in worse stuff. Nice. Then I seen Salt Lake City involved in openly, and it's because the members there there are members of the, it should it should be highly righteous because of the members of the church, but it's not. It's, it's a defiled city, and so those two visions that I that I had one day after the next, they actually went together, and I was told the next day when I was thinking about it. So the Lord said that the first vision represents the United States and that before these things happened, the strength of the United States would fall away, That's which symbolizes why the jar broke apart slowly and just crumbled in my hands and all the living water spilled out, representing that the, the life and strength of the United States would begin to disappear before these things took place, which is going on right now. And then the, then the Holy Ghost said to me, Here is a sign for you to know that this is true. And he said that I would see that these things would begin to happen when I saw 
an earthquake and a fire take place one right after the ne next in California and sure enough a couple weeks later there was an earthquake in or in um, in California and then there was a fire in two different areas the, of course you could say that's a coincidence but that's specifically what I was told and so that is the the, the next vision uh, the, the next thing that I was told later on if I, if I can remember it oh yeah it was I was I was a uh, I had moved back to California I was just back here and I was looking for a job and I was depressed and so um, once a week I would ride uh, my bike down to the bay and I would sit there and I I didn't like see it see it but like it was told to me and that I saw a leviathan uh, swim up in uh, along the coast of California and that it sw it, as it swam it, sw it swallowed uh, three cities uh, along the coast um, San Diego, Los Angeles, and San Francisco and that I w took these to understand that that these cities would be destroyed by, by ships that would be along the the eastern, the, the, I mean the western coast from uh, China and Russia. Let me draw a map of the United States here. Oh, this isn't necessarily a good picture. It's just a to show. So here's the United States. I saw. I saw three, the three cities, San Francisco, um, Los Angeles, and San Diego, they were swallowed by the Leviathan. But uh, I didn't really see it, I was told it, but it was like a parable the, the Holy Ghost told me. And then, um, later, after that, I received uh, another revelation, and... This was this is actually in response to the first vision that I told you about because I was thinking more about it, and the Holy Ghost explained it more to me, and this is uh, what it explained. See, this is my attempt at drawing the, the Rocky Mountains. Now, I was told that that the China-Russian alliance of nations would gather together and fight against the United States. And that they would invade from three directions. And they have, they have their own oh, they have a primary objective. They're going to invade through the Gulf. And they're going to invade from the east, the northeast. Now, I do not believe they are going to invade directly the west coast, but they will lo launch attacks from ships along the coast. 
And so this is my um, visualization. You see, they will have ship. They will have ships along our coast firing missiles, and they will take out targets along the coastal areas. And then through the Gulf of Mexico, they will invade the breadbasket. <laughs> And then from the east, northeast, they will invade going downwards uh, the east coast heading towards the breadbasket, the central plains area. Now, the east coast will be lined with ships too, and they will fire many uh, missiles in that from, from there too. And in fact, the eastern coast is going to be more devastated than the western coast. Now, the, the armies, when they invade, they want the breadbasket. They want to take our cattle. They want to take all our grain and our lands there. Because they, because, uh, they want that food to take care of their people because they also believe that a famine is coming. Which is why the elites have been hiding food in the Rocky Mountains and little bunkers they've built for themselves. Which has, which will not be used for us. And so, now they're going to take over this, the, the eastern part of the United States, I believe. But I, I get a, a strong spiritual impression that the Rocky Mountains are going to be the front lines. And that when America is almost ready to give up the war, then the Lord is going to return his hand to the Americans and, and, uh, and the Americans will fight and take back the lands that were stolen from them and they will win the war. Now, as I said, this war comes because America has rejected the laws of God which are basically found in the Torah. And as I said, the Lord is primarily concerned with three things, our pride, our sexual immorality, our destruction of the family structure, and the murder and slaughter of, of people and animals. Uh, lots, lots of people have been murdered by the government in the United States, and thousands upon thousands of children are murdered every day through abortion, and, and that is the most offensive thing to the Lord. And so, if we were to repent of those three things, the war can be stopped. Now, in the past I was never told a timeline, but recently I have been feeling a strong feeling of a timeline. And that I believe that this attack will take place uh, within by the, around four years. That's the spiritual prompting that I've been getting. And I know my mom actually felt that in that number two. And so I, I was thinking about that. And then uh, finally I got a, a spiritual prompting that yes, yes, that's an accurate number. And so we have four years. I'd say three years. We have three years to get ready. By the fourth year, it's going to be too late. I believe that is all of the, the information that I, that I have received that I can recall at the time. So thank you for taking this time to listen. I know that these things are true. I am not alone in saying this. And... So I'm adding my, my witness to the, the hundreds of other people who are speaking out that have had similar revelations. I encourage you to do the same if you have ever had a revelation about this, to speak up. And I will, I will work from this point forward to push the, the, the laws of God forward to teach them so that we can know how to prevent this. We can 
we can expose the spirit combination and that's all well and good, but in the end, exposing them is not enough. We must repent and return to the true path that God has given. And if we can just fix the pride, the sexual immorality, and the destruction of our families, and the, the, the wholesale murder of innocent lives, including animals in our nation, then these things will be stayed. But if we do not, they will happen. I leave you that. Amen.